we all know that Baltimore continues to have a fractured relationship between the police and the community. And recent events continue to demonstrate the need to press forward with these reforms. We have to get it right. The damage has been done in the city of Baltimore. Hundreds of businesses and homes lie in ruin. Confidence in the local police force has been shattered. And the city's spending board, they've approved over a quarter million dollars in settlements in the last two weeks alone. Who is ultimately responsible for the death of Freddie Gray? That is a tough question to answer, and it's going to take time. But what we do know is who will be held financially responsible? You, the taxpayer. Our next guest believes the police should be the ones footing the bill for the crimes. Now, where does that money come from? Let's welcome into Midpoint attorney, co-founder, and CEO of Four Mighty, a legal team specializing in empowering the little guy against large corporations. Josh Schwadron joins us. Josh, thank you for being here today. Thanks for having me, Ed. So here we get to the point that the taxpayers, first let's just set this out, because I found out that nearly in one city alone in Chicago recently, over half a billion dollars had been paid out. This is taxpayer money, but give us an idea of the scope and the depth of the amount of money that's being paid out around America that is coming out of taxpayers' pockets. Yeah, it's, it's a shame. Uh, you know, one of the things that we should set out at the beginning is somebody should pay. You know, when somebody is hurt or injured through the negligence or intentional acts of another person uh, and they had the worst days of their lives, uh, somebody who's responsible should pay. And so it's important to just lay out first and foremost uh, that people should be compensated for their injuries, whether it's uh, the family or the victim themselves. Uh, who should pay is obviously a harder question. Uh, and in this case, uh, and in the cases around America, as you point out, uh, there is an egregious amount of money being paid uh, by taxpayers like you and I, Ed, uh, to remedy uh, the uh, injustices that are being done by uh, police and prosecutors, uh, well, less so prosecutors, but police uh, and, uh, and a lot of other uh, people all around the country. But Josh, this isn't something new. I mean, let's be very honest here. This sort of payouts, they've been go this has been going on for a long time here. The money's got to come from somewhere. So if you don't have taxpayer money, which we know they depend on, that funds the police, the fire, all the services as well, where's it going to come from? It's not as if, I don't think Donald Trump is going to back up the bus here and all of a sudden just land a few billion dollars on somebody's doorstep. Yeah, so for me, it's less about where the money comes from and more about how we can prevent this from happening. And I think the way you do that is by making people financially responsible. And so the problem with uh, making police pay uh, is it puts something in the back of their minds when they're doing their jobs, which are, as you and I know really well, really hard jobs. Are you then talking about though, the cops being able to be legally liable, so if they do something and they are found then guilty of something, that a citizen can bring an individual lawsuit perhaps against them and cut the city out of it completely? Well, let's be clear, that happens today. Yes. So police are, are subject to lawsuits, but they rarely pay. Uh, actually, just last year, um, uh, NYU professor Joanna, Sh uh, uh, Joanna Schwartz, writing for the NYU Law Review, in fact, she's a UCLA professor, found that in 99.98% of situations, uh, looking at 75 precincts across the country, uh, when cops and police officers get sued, uh, the precincts and taxpayers like you and I actually indemnify them. So in fact, they do get sued, but we don't actually end up making them pay. And, and I, I believe that there should be uh, a thoughtful conversation about how we can, on one hand, uh, not make these people fear on the job that they're going to lose uh, you know, their house or uh, co come into financial hardship. But on the other hand, uh, make them think twice, especially about intentional acts. Um, a, pr a professor uh, and legal scholar, Richard Emery, uh, is, uh, has a very thoughtful law review article about how we can balance uh, potential fines, just like people Okay, let me stop you there tickets. for a second, Josh, if you don't mind. I've got about yeah. two minutes left, but I want to make sure we get an answer on this, because aren't we talking about a very slippery slope here? Because let's be honest, not all lawsuits are actually real, if you will. They're not, they're not honest lawsuits. Some people just bring frivolous lawsuits against the cops. So how are you going to have the cops then, or fire department even out there working for the city trying to protect the citizenry knowing that anybody could file any sort of a frivolous lawsuit against them at any time and basically take their homes away injure their children stop their livelihood that that's a tough slope you, you can't stop that once you begin well that's why there's indemnification in the first place and frivolous lawsuits uh, they are few and far between if you actually look at the statistics 
uh, most lawsuits are absolutely meritorious. And, and really what we're focusing on here are the meritorious cases. We're focusing on the cases where people get injured, they just had the worst days of their lives, and really what we want to do is figure out who should be paying them. Okay. And what, what lawsuits are about, let me just say this one thing is important. Ten seconds. Lawsuits are about two things, about compensating, but it's also about deterrence. And what we need to do as a society is make people feel the, 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 the consequences of their actions by deterring their behavior. So I've got less than a minute left. What exactly is your group pushing for? Uh, well, we want people to at least feel a little bit of the pain for intentional acts. Uh, you know, again, police officers, uh, they do an amazing job and they have the hardest, one of the hardest jobs in the world. And so I certainly do not think that uh, they should be held, be held personally liable uh, in most any case, but for intentional acts. Uh, they should, we should figure out a thoughtful approach. Is that a fund, uh, though, Josh? Have I have a, to just get you. I only got 20 seconds left. Are you talking about a fund for the cops to have ready to defend themselves? We, we do that today. I mean, there are, there are sure. funds and in-house counsel for people to defend themselves. Really, what I'm talking about is making police precincts accountable, making police officers accountable for intentional acts. Uh, we need to deter this type of behavior. We need to make it less common. And, and more than anything, we need to give justice to people uh, who are the victims of these of these acts. And worry about where all that money is coming from as well. We still have a lot of unanswered questions there. Josh Wadron, thanks so much for joining us. I'm sure we'll be following up on the story. Thanks so much, Ed. All right, take care. Our friends and allies across the pond head to the polls today. Okay, but how did the United States and the United Kingdom develop such a friendship? I mean, this didn't just happen overnight. Although, maybe it did. We'd ask Monty Python for that, right? We'll take a look at all that when we come back right here on Midpoint.